everyone. Welcome to Winfield's week of Rugby League. A week started with upsets starting last Wednesday night at Leichhardt Oval in the National Panasonic Cup clash between Penrith and Cronulla. We'll have all the highlights of that for you. Also, the Saturday match of the day between St George and Canterbury Bankstown, another amazing result, as was the uh, State Bank big game from Brookvale Oval last Sunday between Balmain and Manly Moringa. And as usual, all the action from each and every other game, another round of Winfield Cup football. But our week started last Wednesday night at Leichhardt Oval, the, f the last of the quarterfinals of the 87 National Panasonic Cup, the clash between Penrith and Cronulla. Hello and welcome to Leichhardt Oval for the fourth quarter final in the National Panasonic Cup for 1987 between the two protagonists, Cronulla, Sutherland and Penrith. Just waiting for the scrum to go square. That's straight through that scrum, but the referees allowed it. Up to Robards. Robards likes to run, likes to come into the three-quarter line as often as possible. Alexander Izzard. Alexander, the runaround move was on there. That is a running from dummy half. And there's a player here. It's Dan Staines, I believe, who's going to get uh, a bit of a talking to for something that happened in the tackle. Well, there's a swinging arm on the replay, but uh, nothing too conclusive. And a major mistake by Penrith they get the ball straight back to the Sharks. Docking takes it, runs back about 10 metres. That was a, a pretty horrendous error, as Graham has said, to miss touch. On the diamond, been responsible for one good run already. Six minutes to go to the first quarter of the uh, end of the first quarter. There's the young fellow, the young picking going away nicely. Gets a pass away to Dan Staines. Ron Quinn. Up to Hatch. Hatch, the captain of the side. He's in uh, great form before he uh, got injured. Miller, the core, out to Coleman. Coleman goes nicely, he'll score! It's a beautiful try, he's gone right round underneath the post, and that will just this side of the post, actually. But that's a beautiful try, well and truly finished. See it again. On the National Panasonic replay, Cronulla getting exactly what they wanted tonight. A lot of positional changes in their team. Players backing up for their third game in just five days. They needed a good start to this clash with Penrith tonight, and they got it. A short blindside move, and Glenn Coleman having a great 1987 season, picks himself up a try. Gavin Miller's the man that takes the ball, and he cuts out Guy Pickens. Good, quick hands from Mark McGaw, and Coleman moves well to come inside the cover defence. And he did well to improve his position. And there should certainly be a smile on the face of Jack Gibson as we see Glenn Coleman going back to his mark. A great start for the Sharks after losing so many players going into this clash tonight. Alan Wilson from 15 metres out and uh, almost directly opposite the right-hand upright. No wind conditions. <laughs> Moves in. It's a goal. Alan Wilson comes up with the extras. So a try to Coleman and a goal to Wilson. Results in Cronulla 6, Penrith Hill. Gavin Miller got a pass away which was uh, knocked down and then fallen on and allowed to get up and play it was Alexander after Simmons. Simmons on to Gaia. Gaia comes to two of them. It's tackled right on the quarter line. Simmons way there to Mark Robinson from the right wing. Gerard. Gerard weaving his way through the Simmons. Simmons out to Acri. Acri to Alexander. Alexander to Izzard. Izzard's gone through the gap but taken out by the cover defence coming across. Last tackle coming up. Simmons at dummy half. Alexander, little grubber kick through, picked up by Docking, lost in the end goal and fallen on. So it'll be a line drop out to restart the play, just a little bit of messy play there. Excellent little kick from Greg Alexander, a bit of a fumble from Jonathan Docking. He might have just about received a little push in the back there. About a minute and a half to go to first quarter time. Long drop out, Robards takes it, comes back towards the opposition. Goes very low down there as he comes to the first defender. 
Clements, Alexander, Izzard. Tackle about five metres short of the quarter line. Simmons, cut out, pass out to Ackley. Simmons, Gerard, through the dummy, went straight ahead. Simmons, Alexander, switches it back to the blind side, on the cart right, lost the ball. It's gone straight to Eddinghausen, and Eddinghausen goes up the sideline. He's good. Go on with this, he's gone very, very well. The defence comes at him and gets him over the sideline. I've got the uh, second quarter coming up now, the second 20 minutes to make up the first half. Cronulla have got the lead, they lead by six points to nil. Let's see how we go for this one. Taken by Docking from the kickoff, out to Diamond. Runs straight into a, a Penrith player. Docking's a dummy half. That's a way to hatch the captain. He's just short of the uh, quarter line. There's this change of possession, a very good uh, position for Penrith with a strong shoulder charge there. Simmons, Alexander, out to Cartwright. Cartwright gets a... Oh, I thought he was going to get the pass away around the body there. Bentley on a Gerard, straightens up with a big step. Should be remembered that he started his career as a centre, this fella. Still got a decent sort of a step for a front row forward. Ackery to his feet. On the Cartwright, Cartwright can't get his arms free. Last tackle coming up. Alexander, Alexander, he's there. Alexander is burrowed over from dummy half in a very adjacent position. So that's the Penrith Panthers striking back in the opening minute. On the National Panasonic replay, a matter of urgency for Penrith now to get right back into this game and set their minds with a job ahead. And Greg Alexander taking upon himself once again to lift the, this Penrith Panthers outfit. Too much pace out of the dummy half area and the defence standing well and truly back and allowing him to run. But he has lifted this side and they were in trouble and they've got to get their minds right back on the job here tonight against Cronulla. Well, that's given the easiest possible kick to his goal kicker who is uh, Greg Clements. Moves in now, takes the kick, so suddenly it's all to do again. Six all. Cronulla six, Penrith six. Tim Sheen is looking very sartorially elegant. Izzard. Alexander. Fetton. Penrith not in position to continue at that on. There was nobody really in position on the outside. Gonzalez. Away to Bentley. Bentley goes up the sideline, throws the pass about 10 yards forward. That was an absolute wasted effort. About three or four yards forward. Hatch. Quinn. Miller. Started out looking all right, that move. Quit. It's the last tackle coming now. There's a kick when charged down. And there is a, a penalty against the uh, Corolla side for interfering with a Penrith player trying to get to the ball. And this could be an equaliser, or it could be one that puts them in front. Another two points, that makes it eight points to six in favour of the Penrith side. Simmons at dummy half there. Makes a good bust from dummy half, gets it away to Jeff Gerard. look at him go, the big fella. Gets the pass back on the inside to Robards, Robards is tackled. About seven metres into the corner. Gerard. Out to Alexander. The defence pours over. Last tackle coming up. Bentley. Clements. There's the kick again. It'll be too long. Over the dead ball line. Out to Quinn. To McGaw. To Coleman. Coleman's got no room up the sideline. Gets a pass back on the inside to Docking. Docking runs into a wall of defence. 
And that was brilliant running by Coleman up the sideline. He had no room at all. There's the crossfield kick again, taken beautifully by the young prop forward, Guy Pickham, and he's tackled a metre short. Gavin Miller's got it. Now here's probably the last bit of action from this half. There's the hooter gone in the background. The kick's been put upfield. It's going to be fielded by Alexander. He's swanning around there in the middle. He's uh, <laughs> there's a Cronulla player being put down. That's the end of the section. And at half time, Penrith lead by eight points to Cronulla's six. Cronulla. Oh, the pass has gone along the ground. Touched the Cronulla player on the foot. Moving it out to McGaw. McGaw straightens, goes nicely, gets it away to Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen gets it there to Hurst. Hurst going up the sideline, goes in and away and loses the ball over the sideline. Quickly established themselves, establishing themselves as one of the best centre combinations in the competition in 1987. McGaw and Eddinghausen and just being grabbed by the jumper was Eddinghausen. He was away. He had to prop and look for Philip Hurst and great cover defence. Mark Wakefield kicks it downfield to Robinson. He's got a bit of space now. He's got away from one. He's carrying another one on the back. Gets it away to Izzard. Izzard slips as he comes to the halfway line. Greg Gibson, Alexander, Joe Vitanza on the halfway line, tackle. Simmons to Gerard, that pass looked a touch forward. Greg Clements surges, gets it away to Alexander. He's going to score a try here. He's beaten everybody, he's beaten himself. Gets a pass away to Batanza. Batanza gets it to Robards. The ball's on the ground, and it's a knock-on. An amazing piece of play. Two or three times it looked as though Greg Alexander had done enough to beat the cover defence of Cronulla. But on this last occasion, slipping as he tried to run around Glen Coleman, looking back in field, he finds the support of Batanza. And the pass just being knocked down by Scott Gustard. And now Alexander with another chance for the Panthers. Alexander gets it away to Robards. Robards goes within four metres of the line. Matt Goodwood from dummy half. Going to have a try, but he's running sideways. Can't get to his feet. Yes, he can now. Out to Vitanza. Vitanza gets a pass away. That's gone close to Greg Gibson. He was tackled immediately. He took that. Out to uh, Simmons. Simmons goes strongly. Trying to release his arms. Away to Clements. Clements back inside to... Bentley, Bentley the last tackle about three metres out from the line to Matt Goodwin. And there it is, there it is, and it took Jethro Gerard to do it. Greg Alexander and Jethro Gerard, the old man. On the National Panasonic replay, it had to come. Two of the better performers for the Penrith side tonight. Jeff Gerard, a short ball to Greg Alexander. A courageous performance by the Sharks. They've just got too tired as this match has worn on with their workload over the last five days. And the man that's always likely to do the damage for Penrith, picking up his second try tonight, the magical little halfback, Greg Alexander. Well, Alexander had the easy job there. He had the job of putting the ball down. My admiration goes out to Jethro Gerard. He's got a lot of tricks, and that one to stand there and uh, dummy to pass wide, then just hold the pass back and give it to a man coming on the burst was just what the, the uh, particular position of the game required. And he did it casually and well. Twelve points to six. Clements takes the kick at goal. He's got it! Spare me days, he didn't kick a goal in 86. He's kicked three here tonight.
Hatch, Wakefield, Gusset gets a pass to McGaw, McGaw got on the inside, he's tried to go on his own, he's thrown the pass and thrown it badly. On the replay, he looks inside McGaw, he has Mark Wakefield and as he passed the ball he realised that he just went that step too far. Also at the same time, Jeff Gerard, after a fairly strong performance in the forwards tonight, Penrith now down. Well, only 12 men. And there it is. There's the hooter. So the score reflects the play. Penrith exerted the most pressure. And they've come up with the goodies. 14 points to six. Tries to... Coleman two, uh, Alexander two, Coleman one, goals to Wilson and Clements three. So Penrith have beaten the Cronulla side by two tries and three goals to a try and a goal. Under the Saturday match of the day at Belmore Sports Ground between Canterbury, Bankstown and St George, the Bulldogs only winning two of their last four Winfield Cup matches and the Saints were just about to prove to everyone in the world of rugby league just how much Canterbury, Bankstown relied on one Steve Mortimer. They hail from the southwest of Sydney. Here are the Bulldogs of Canterbury. And so the Canterbury Bankstown side, led out by their captain Steve Mortimer, and the last man out, Paul Dunn. A welcome return to first grade for Dunning, and won't he be in for a blinder this afternoon? Scott Bennett coming into the lineup in place of the injured Peter Mortimer. The halves there, Steve Mortimer and Terry Lamb, as mentioned earlier in the day, could be the key to the game. And there's the forward pack, Folks and Dunn in the second row. Kelly and Jarvis and Eddie Muller making his first grade debut for Canterbury Banks down this afternoon in place of the injured Mark Buckner. Known as the team that breathes fire, the St George Dragons. Well, they haven't breathed much fire in 1987, but today might see them return to the winning list. They were desperately unlucky against Parramatta, and they've certainly shown improved form since the bye just five weeks ago. The back line, Beattie and Johnston in the centres, opposed to Farrah and Mortimer, should be the clash of the afternoon. And the forward pack, the same as that which finished the game against Parramatta last week with Billy Noak in at prop forward. Referee this afternoon is Mick Stone. St George defending the railway or northern end of the ground in the first stanza, which obviously means that Canterbury are defending the southern end or that gigantic bulldog end here at the Belmore Sports Ground. Funnel takes the ball on the full and runs it back just over the quarter line. Let's go down to the sideline and find out what the conditions are like down there, though. Beautiful day out here at Belmore, but what's it like on the touchline? Ian Hansen. Perfect conditions here, David. Uh, the field is an absolute picture, as the uh, people at home can see. Uh, slight breeze from the southwest, and I think we're in for a superb game of football. And look out for two players, uh, Eddie Muller, the Canterbury hooker, and also Steve Robinson, who had a superb match last week against Parramatta. And that was Robinson who affected that good ball and all tackle on Mick Potter, the Canterbury fullback, after Graham Wynn had put that towering punt downfield. And uh, by the looks of the looks of things, uh, Ian, uh, the, that kick from Wynn was well inside his quarter. It went all the way down to the uh, the try line. The flags seem to indicate there might be a bit of a breeze there favouring St George in the first half. Well, he's got a great uh, he's got a great boot, G. Wynn, hasn't he? Mortimer gets that pass away. That's Terry Lamb who's going to be wrapped up. A few metres out from the Canterbury quarter line. Johnston affected that tackle and is limping away from it. He seems to be favouring his right leg. Last tackle against Canterbury. Folks comes away to Mortimer. Steve Mortimer, that is. Up towards the quarter line. Only two of the Mortimers playing this afternoon. Steve and Chris. Ricky Walford gets the ball for St George, the left winger, and runs it 11 metres out from his own quarter line. Both sides, David, just sorting themselves out. Note who packed down in the scrum with Jarvis against Canterbury in that 85 grand final. What a terrible pass. And Terry Lamb in trying to regather that drop ball. Funnel dropped it. Just couldn't control it. Otherwise, that could easily have been a Canterbury try. Well, this really was a bad mistake here. And Lamb, ever present, always there. What a lot of problems he created. He's like a panther sometimes, isn't he? You, when you least expect it, Terry Lamb just goes, pounce. 
He just knows where to be, David. He reads the game so well. He runs straight down the paddock. He knows that uh, on the two touch lines, the ball's got to come back in. He's got that sixth sense. Ball into the scrum. It's one by Canterbury. Mortimer, the open side. Terry Lamb. Away it goes to Chris Mortimer. The pass comes away from Potter. Farrah. Farrah for the line. He gives it out to the winger. Going over and diving and scoring the try. Tony Carey and Canterbury are in four points to nil. Great try to the Bulldogs. And they fully deserve that. And I'm sure that the St. George coach, Roy Masters, will have a lot to say. Now watch this. Now watch for Ricky Walford, the wingman, is way off beam here. Now you'll see Ricky come through. The linking, he should have been out on the wing. And that's how the overlap was created. And Kerry, very, very nice indeed, in for the try. Now watch it again. Beautiful quick ball here. Now watch Terry Lamb draw his man into no man's land. The linking from the fullback. Beautiful football. And there you see, watch for the wingman and created the overlap and that was made easy. And Curry only had four games last year. Of course, he, uh, he had some injuries last year, that leg injury. He was the leading try scorer though for Brisbane West in 1985. As Lamb moves in, there's the kick. It's very high in the air, but he's missed it. So Canterbury leading St George by four points to nil. I'm afraid it's been uh, their tale of woe so far in 87 in the Winfield Cup for St George. Far too many mistakes. Lamb's pass out wide to Chris Mortimer. Mortimer up to the quarter line. Bennett got it on the second grab. He's down there. He's got away from Kokas. He's got it back to Lamb. Lamb's gone without it. Bennett's come back and dived on the loose ball and he's regained possession there for Canterbury. Muller goes from dummy half. Kokas does the defensive work. He's 18 metres out as it comes now from Folks. Away to Steve Mortimer. On to Paul Dunn. And Dunn goes crashing down the middle. Good run from Paul Dunn. He's only nine metres away from the St George line as Mortimer moves into dummy half. Goes the open side. The ball comes away and that's a crashing bone jarring tackle and Chris Mortimer gets up under play only five meters out Steve Mortimer the pass goes from Terry Lamb the long one comes out to Scott Bennett who again had to do uh, uh, a more or less a Houdini performance to gather the pass in Lamb picked up that loose ball as it came back on the inside last tackle against Canterbury Steve Mortimer he'll put the grubber kick in Graham wins brilliantly taken well for a man who they've always uh, regarded as having four hands that was as good a take as you'd ever wish to see. Tremendous slips catch that one. Well, here you see the kick. <laughs> and Wynn said, oh, I've got this one. Folks and land there. Ten metres out from Canterbury's quarter line. Young takes it up. Down the centre comes Fraser. But beautifully read by Jarvis and Kelly. Just outside the Canterbury quarter line. Johnston, away it comes from Kokas. Now that's Beatty. And that's good defence again from Terry Lamb. Not necessarily in the classic mould, but right round the bootlaces as Kokas gets it. And out wide it comes down to Brian Johnston. But look at this Canterbury defence. It's relentless at the moment. Certainly is, David. And St George have to realise this. They've got to start using the kick. They've got to start breaking it up with something. Bad pass from Young. Young's going to get the ball back and it'll probably be six to go. It is, says the referee. Definitely was kicked ahead by a Canterbury player. Chris Mortimer saying, uh, not really. And Albert, as he's well known, Craig Young down injured. Well, you see the ball here, and it's definitely kicked by the Canterbury player. It was a bad pass. Or should we say it was bad reading, because there was no one really backing up Young there. And you see the knees going in. Accidental. I always call them 50-50. Craig Young uh, has played 18 internationals, test matches for Australia. Jason Alchin coming to the sideline. He's the one that scored the try that broke the deadlock in reserve grade and had a blinder, I might add, but he wasn't the only one who had a big game in reserve grade. A couple of the Englishmen, uh, especially Whitfield, who uh, joined the Canterbury Club after that marvellous win by Halifax in the Challenge Cup final, also had strong games. Certainly did. Colin Whitfield, uh, very impressive in the centre. And don't be surprised if you see him being introduced later in the game. St George have got the ball now with Kokas. He puts that kick high in the air. It's coming down on the quarter line. It's taken, though, by Farrah. Not enough pressure, not deep enough, really, that kick. And Farrah, good strong run from Andrew Farrah, runs it back to within 10 metres of the halfway. Curry a dummy half. Throws the dummy, goes on his own, almost back to the halfway line. Nine metres in from the eastern touch line as Muller gets it away. Now Dunn takes it up. Dunn up inside St George's territory. And Steve Mortimer is leaving the field. Olympia. Well, we saw the action there, and he was quick to point out and grab his, uh, the back of his leg. Obviously, that he's tweaked. He's not going to take any gambles with it. Why not? 
when you've got a player of this quality Alchin to take his position and that kick a little bit too strong that time from Terry Lamb going out on the full but what's going to happen to the I know that Jason Alchin is a remarkably good footballer but Mortimer's organizing qualities certainly seems to lift Canterbury when he's there it certainly does David he'll miss his leadership no two ways about that but uh, he'll more than make up for it with Jason Alton penalty against St George collapsing the scrum let's not forget he was the guy that caused shall we say indirectly a lot of disturbance within the Bulldog camp earlier in the season Yes, uh, I'm from the sideline. I've just spoken to the trainer again from Canterbury, and he's confirmed that Steve Mortimer has, in fact, uh, torn his hamstring. So that is bad news for the Bulldogs as they try and uh, keep in touch with this uh, final five. Terry Lamb with the ball at the moment. Of course, the worst news about it is that a few of their players will be in state of origin matches over the next few weeks, so they're going to have a few more problems in the penalty against St George. Up inside the five, and Terry Lamb will come across to the quarter line and have a shot at penalty goal. Well, a bit of desperation coming into St. George defence. As much experience as Beattie and Johnson, the centres have, they really are setting off like an express train. And that's how the first try came about. They moved up quickly. The only problem was that Ricky Walford on the left wing came in far too much into the middle and it created the overlap Canterbury were looking for. And they were justifiably rewarded with that four points. There's the penalty count at the moment, favouring Canterbury 5-2. to two. This is the first one, though, that either side have been able to have a shot at goal with this afternoon. And Terry Lamb scored 210 points last year. Canterbury didn't have a bad kangaroo tour either. Scored over a century of points on the kangaroo tour. Moves in. There's the kick from Lamb. He seemed to get a fair bit of sand with that. And consequently, he's missed the goal. You can see the sand almost fly as high as the ball when he kicked that. And that's exactly the same thing that happened to Steve Funnell when he had that late shot at penalty goal last week against Parramatta. Seemed to take more sand than ball. It certainly did, David. I think uh, anyone that can lip read. Oh, oh he's made a meal of that. Well, we talk about mistakes in this game. Let's not be too critical on Potter. Remember, he was looking right into the sun. But he should have enough experience to turn sideways. Now you can see the sun here, see the shadow behind him. He turns sideways to try to get out of it. So, I'm sorry, Mr. Potter, you take the 100% blame. So St. George have got the ball out wide, and now Walford, Walford for the corner. Farrow giving chase, Farrow won't get him. Ricky Walford comes round, and St. George has scored it for all. Well, tit for tat. There's a guy that scores a try, and it was his fault, really, in the first place that let Canterbury in. And he's got his just desserts now because watch out for Tony Curry. There he is. He's done exactly the same thing and left it all the work to do with the centre part, with the centre Farrah. And that's an easy try. But full credit, the ball was whipped out wide. There you see Farrah trying desperately to try to stop the wingman. But it was a try as soon as you saw that the wingman, Tony Curry, had come right into the play. You can't afford to do it. There's the kick, it's low, it's a stab kick, and it's across the face, and so the score remains at four all. St George four, Canterbury four. Langmeck's going to be asked to play the ball about 35 metres out from Canterbury's line. Alchin, now it's with Lamb. Lamb's pass out wide, though, is not a good one, but Bennett got a good bounce and picked it up well. He's back on the inside, can't get his pass away. It's taken there by Fraser below and Young over the top. And Kelly wasn't expecting that. Now it's been knocked on again, and no, no hazard for St George. That was stupid play, irrespective of whether Kelly wasn't expecting it. You've got to keep your eyes open in this ball. And that offside, that's Canterbury. And Walford will have a shot at goal from there, I suspect. He's about 36 metres out right in front. Canterbury having had just that fraction more ball so far in the first half, which has only got about seven minutes remaining, I might add. It's four all at the moment, but Walford with a chance to give the Dragons a lead. He's right in front, but he is 36, 37 metres out. Walford moves in. There's the kick. He struck it pretty well. He's got it. Two points for the Dragons. And St George, a leading Canterbury makes down with about seven minutes remaining in the first half by six points to four. Done affecting that tackle. 
as Funnel now gets the pass away from Kokas. He had a bit of ha trouble handing that. Now that's Robinson. And Robinson is going to have to get up and play the ball just outside his borderline. He almost threw that pass then to Beatty as Johns comes in. Johns is going to play it. Johnston. Funnel. Funnel puts the kick in up over the halfway line, down towards the quarter line. And Potter's going to get that ball. Only about 16 or 17 metres out from his own line. Now, he's trying to beat Beatty and uh, Robinson. He can't do so in the end. Robinson clung to that sock. Chris Mortimer from Dummy Hart. The pass out by It's not a good one. Perry's gone without it. Balls are trying to throw it through. It's still loose. It's towed through by Brian Johnston. Johnston gathers it up. Johnston dies. Johnston scores. Rugby League's a game of opportunity, and when it knocks, open the door. And you didn't get a bigger door than this one. Oh, dearie me, watch for this awful pass. Now, this is a typical situation of a team not getting themselves out. Once again, the wingman, why on earth is he out there? And believe you me, this is a gift. Well, 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 he's tried his best here, Mortimer, to keep the ball alive. He kept it alive. Wingmen, you don't stand there. You don't stand with your centres. Otherwise, this is what happens. It's a gift. Oh, Christmas has come early. Right out on the touch line. A couple of metres out from the quarter line. Moves in. There's the kick. He took almost the whole sandcastle with it, and he's missed it. Well, we've seen quite a few kickers today really kick the sandcastle. But St George are in front, approaching half-time. They lead by 10 points to four. He's up. He's out on the wing, though. And Johns has moved into the centre. St George running it out wide through no. Almost half-time. That certainly was a player full of confidence there, Steve Funnell. Very calm when he defused that bomb. Kokas got that pass away to Robinson. And Robinson... Wrapped up a few metres out from the St George quarter line as Wolford moves into dummy half. Away it comes now. Now Funnel. He's got a towering kick on him. Look at that. Down over the quarter line. Back towards the Canterbury in goal area. Now Potter has to gather that ball in and run it back. That is as good a kick as you'd wish to get at that stage of the match. Really forcing the issue down inside Canterbury oh. quarter line. <laughs> the siren goes in the background for half time. And at half time, St George go in leading Canterbury Banks down by 10 points to four. Two tries, one to Walford and one to Johnston. Walford's kicked the penalty goal, while Canterbury Banks down's four points. Tony Curry's try. Half time, St George 10, Canterbury four. So there's the kickoff to restart the match. Funnel kicking it off. Steve Folks gathering it in now for Canterbury Banks down on the second row and runs it back to his own quarter line. Muller and Folks, two of the players in the first half who really did shine for Canterbury Banks down. Folks getting through 15 tackles. So too did the hooker, Eddie Muller. Paul Dunn managed 12. As Jarvis takes it ahead for the Bulldogs. The top tackling players in the St George lineup, Fullerton, Smith, and Young with 14 apiece, and the lock forward Colin Fraser, who's just joined them with 14 with that tackle just a moment ago. Funnel. And there's that ball rolling around, and De Potter picks it up. And that's about, I'd say, a good 11 metres away from Ian Hansen, who's down on the sideline. Ian. Thanks very much, David. Actually, just had a very interesting interview with uh, Steve Mortimer, and it's good news for, uh, for Steve. He thinks, at the most, only one week, and he had a chat to uh, Jason Alchin, and he told Jason to keep it simple, and uh, they can win this game. In the St George room, confidence sky high. Roy Masters wants these, uh, the Dragons to keep going, and uh, don't be surprised if they lose Craig Young midway through this uh, second half. Billy Johnston receiving some attention in the back players. That bad pass has gone loose and it's been towed through by Brian Johnston. Ricky Walford also there. Walford toes it ahead again. Walford will win the race. Walford dies. Walford scores. So Georgia in again. Another terrible Canterbury mistake. This time Walford scores the try. Again, Johnston involved. It's 14-4. Couldn't have wished for a better start. And this really has been a tale of woe for the Canterbury side. We just heard Ian Hansen say, play it simple. 
that was simple. Dumb and simple. A beautiful kick through by Brian Johnston. And the wingman, who I was critical on in the first half for allowing Canterbury to get the try, certainly makes up for it there. From a different angle, this is awful. And I mean awful. Deary me, they do better than that at passing the ball through the hole in the shopping centres, the kids do. It's an easy, easy try. Now let's see, close in. Did he ground it well? No doubt. Walford moving in. There's the kick from Walford. He's going to steer it to the left of the uprights. So it's been a woeful day for goal kicking as far as both sides are concerned. St George so far scoring three tries to one, leading 14 points to four on the scoreboard. Well, what was said at half-time to the Canterbury Bulldogs just went right out of the window. I'm sure there was plenty to be said by their coach, Warren Ryan. But that really was bad football. Simple, fundamental mistakes. And it's cost them dearly. But isn't it incredible, though, where the deja vu involved? The first try St George scored, or I should say the Johnston try, which was the second one they scored of the afternoon. It was towed through by Walford initially, and then Johnston finished it off. That time it was Johnston who towed it through and Walford who finished it off. Or well, like ballroom dancing, Davey, but I'm sure Coach Romeisters will be very, very pleased with the two points if they can hang on. There's only ten points in it. St George with the ball just outside their own quarter line. So Craig Young, who has uh, some very he heavy strapping on that left knee, as you'll notice, just playing the ball. So it comes away to Kokas. He got that hurried kick in up over the halfway line. Oh, and Curry's made a meal for the handling errors in the Canterbury line up this afternoon. Gee, Warren Ryan would be despairing. He just watch this. Bit of hair. David, this is a deary, deary me, I can assure you. Deary, deary me. And that could well prove so costly. I think he'll get an early shower. Well, that's bad football. And now Johnston's picked him up. Johnston over the halfway. Johnston down to the quarter line. He offloads the pass out to Chris Johns, who's run out of room on the touch line. But he's still going. He's up over the quarter line. The pass comes over the top. Six to go, says the referee, as it came off the Canterbury hand. And St George are only 18 metres away as the ball comes from Kogas. And now it's with Wynn. Wynn spins in the tackle. He's going to be held up by Fakes and Muller right on the Canterbury quarter line. Into dummy half as Billy Johnson as it comes away now towards the second row of Fullerton Smith. And Wally Fullerton Smith will play it. Only 18 metres out from Canterbury's line. Johnston, dummy half, blindside. Young. Young goes straight down the centre. And Young's got to within nine metres of Canterbury's line. Johnston again a dummy half. He goes on his own. Oh, he could have almost been charged with a shepherd. He's got the pass away now to win. Win the flick pass comes back to Robinson. Robinson throws the dummy. Robinson on his own. Robinson will score right at the post. Put away the glasses. This game is all parceled up. The Dragons are cutting into ribbons. It's 18 4. Well, we saw the face of Roy Masters. You know, one would have expected he had a big smile. But he knows there's still a few problems there. But that should wrap up the game. He's been waiting a long time for this. Now, St George made this all on their own. They kept the ball alive. There's no mistake to take away the shine off the glory. The good switch by Wynn. Now, watch Robinson take the dummy. I'll go high load. No one going the low road. And they paid the price. Johnston, well, could have been perhaps Shepard involved there. Got away with it. Watch the switch by Wynn. Great pass inside. Here's the dummy. Let's say it's yours, it's yours, and believe you me, there'll be plenty set to those two players. Here comes Walford's kick and he's got it. Two more points for St George, and St George have raced away. They're leading by 20 points to four. And who would have thought it, David? The St George side, it was absolutely demoralized in the confidence and psychology department last week. There, there's Roy, still without a smile on his face. As there's the ball out for folks, and that's the reason why back to Dunn. Dunn gets the pass back towards Muller, and Muller 
has taken only a couple of metres away from the St George line. Canterbury desperate for a quick play the ball as Dunn slips it away to Alchin. Alchin's taken by Funnel, but he's managed to get up and have another go. Alchin going for the line. He's only about a metre out from the Saints line. Dunn again in a dummy half. Dunn got the pass away from Muller. It's come out wide to Curry. It came off a St George player, but the referee hasn't given a signal of six to go as Curry will play the ball, it comes from Muller again, back it goes to Dunn, Dunn stands in the tackle, he can't get the pass away, yes he can, but been knocked on though by St George, and the scrum will go down, it was a hard one for Nope to handle after Fullerton Smith seemingly had the intercept, the scrum will go down 10 metres out from Saints line, at about 14 metres in from the western touch line, and Play guess down what? injured is Billy Nope. And guess what, he just went down, a fly must have knocked him to the ground, and good refereeing at last, telling him to get up off the floor. He realised he was only shamming. Canterbury have won the scrum and Curry goes the blind. And so the pressure is back on St George. St George leading by 20 points to four. Canterbury trying desperately to get back into the match. It's Alchin gets the pass away. Now it goes from Potter. Away it goes to Langmack. Langmack got the pass back and went towards Jarvis. Jarvis throws the long pass out wide to Bennett in the end. And Bennett trying to come back on the inside. He's still going, Scotty Bennett. And he's got to within about six metres of the St George line. A few metres in from that eastern touch line as the ball comes away to Jarvis again. And Jarvis is almost in. He's only about a metre out from the St George line. Muller at dummy half. Away it comes from Alton. Alton on his own. Alton spied the gap, but it closed pretty quickly. Good defence from Saints that time as the pass comes away now to Langmack. Langmack holds the pass up for Farrah, but that was very well signalled. Ten metres out. Last tackle against Canterbury. That's Langmack. Langmack puts the kick in. It's taken there by Funnel in the end goal area, and he gets it back into the field of play. And there's the new blood, Steve, though. Your countryman, Colin Whitfield, the Halifax uh, Challenge Cup final uh, winner. Well, you can't get any better blood than that, Ian. Pommy blood, that is. <laughs> He's a good goal kicker as well. Had a superb game in the uh, reserve grade match. Also had a superb game for uh, Halifax against the Kangaroos last year. He's got plenty of class and he'll need it because St. George, they're leading 20 points to four. And if St. George eventually do win this game, they should buy their little halfback, Kokas, a few be beers because it was his tackle that stopped the momentum right underneath the post when it looked like Canterbury were going to get right back into this game and look as though they were going to score a converted try. Potter with the ball, he plays it, and that's Bennett going from dummy half. Bennett back towards the halfway line. Muller comes into dummy half. Away it comes from, oh, he almost dropped that auction. Lamb has though, and St George have got possession. And that's the 14th handling error that Canterbury have made in the match. As Kokas, Kokas running out wide, always collected by Dunn. And you don't get away from Paul Dunn when he comes into effect the tackle. Blindside, it comes away to Funnel. Funnel is wrapped up there. Good tackling by Eddie Muller. 10 metres inside Canterbury's territory. Billy Johnston throws the dummy, now gets it away towards the lock forward there, Colin Fraser. Midway, Hartman quarter line. Canterbury's end of the field, Kokas. Out it comes now from Robinson. The pass even out wide, it comes to Johnston. But Curry in very quickly that time, wrapping Johnston up, ball and all. Last tackle against St George. As Graham win now, a dummy half goes away now towards Funnel. Funnel, a long range shot at field goal which is wide and it's not even going to go dead. So Potter has to gather it in the in-goal area and run it back into the field of play. Now the St George players have been caught napping here as Potter's gone straight through them. Potter up to the halfway line. All of the St George players thought it was going to go dead. So did the Canterbury players. And Potter realised this, waited to the last moment and sprinted to the halfway line. There's no doubt the message is going out from Roy Masters. Slow things down and at least keep you on your toes. They can't allow Canterbury back into this game. They should coast in from here, but not by stopping from packing up. As the ball comes out wide now to Farrah, Farrah the dummy up over the quarter line. Farrah going hard for the line. He can't get the pass back on the inside to Folks. And it was Folks who started that one again like he started the previous one, and Kelly has crashed into the ground. My word, that was a beautiful tackle. As it comes out now to Alton, Alton tries the little grubber kick, and Funnel gathers it in for St George. But what about that tackle of Brian Johnston on Kelly? Another bone-crunching piece of defence from Brian Johnston. 
And now Funnel struggling to his feet. Another St George player in the background injured is Michael Beatty. And St George 11 metres out from their own line. Play it. That's Billy Johnston. Johnston back it goes to Graham Wynn. Beatty there. Just trying to regather his breath by the looks of things. But both times those Canterbury raids have started by Stephen Folks on the edge of the ruck. Certainly up, David, but uh, deep in, within their own territory. He's and now getting the pass away. That's Fraser up over the halfway. Fraser trying to take on Potter. Fraser's run for the Potter. Fraser going for the line. And Colin Hollywood Fraser scores under the post. St George 24. Canterbury makes down four. You won't see a better individual try than that. And that's the reason why he's gulping for hair. Deary me. Run under the ball, son. Push them in. Keep the ball alive. Beautiful play here. It was great play by Chris Johns and set Fraser the lock through. Now watch the step. He thought he had him. No. Lamb tries desperately. And what a great try. It's all over. Now this is the reason why they kept it alive. They all went high on Johns. Now look at that. It's a long time since I've seen the St. Uh, Canterbury side, sorry, that haven't gone low. And the way it was clear, here comes Potter. Oops, I went the wrong way. This fella didn't. In for a great try, and that's a game. Walford moves in. There's the extras added. St. George are leading Canterbury. Banks down by 26 points to four. And Steve-O, what will footy tap pay? It'll pay a monster boy, and I'm sure there's a lot of thousand people out there watching this game that are doing exactly what I'll be doing after the game, tearing up the ticket. Tomorrow, ABC Radio will be covering the big match up at Brookvale Oval, the top of the table clash of the Winfield Cup competition leaders, Balmain against the team running second, Manly Warringah, as Kokas has got a beautiful ball back on the inside of Graham Wynn. Wynn charging at the line, Wynn still going. Graham Wynn's got within a metre of that Canterbury line. Quick ball out wide. That's got to be a penalty against Potter. He's, he's about 15 metres offside. He's, he's come from nowhere. Well, he's, he's got, got five, five minutes in the well, David, Mick Beatty gives him a tap on the back to say, well, anyone would have probably done it. It, it would have been a certain St George try. And it looks as if Kokas is going to come off. As there's the kick from Walt, but he's got it. Two more points for St George. And St George are leading Canterbury Banks down by 28 points to four. And off comes Mark Kokas, who's had an absolute blind of this afternoon, replaced by Steve Lenane. Canterbury Banks down 22 handling errors this afternoon. So uncharacteristic for Canterbury. Steve Robinson, another one who's had a great game for the Dragons, plays the ball to Steve Lenane. And Lenane, who uh, had an injury early in the season. Well, Canterbury have their only themselves to blame, David, but uh, let's also give credit to the St. George side after that shaky start. They bounce back and it's been some of their bone crunching tackles that's put the pressure on the Canterbury that's forced them into those errors. So into dummy half is Johnston. Comes away now towards Lenane and Lenane's going to have a shot at Bill Goal. It's high, it's straight, it's two more. It should say one more point. And St George are leading Canterbury Banks down 29 points to four. 29 points to four. There must be some guy out there watching this, thinking to myself, I could pick up a monster here. 29 points to four. Who would have thought it? Excellent position, excellent execution, and nearly knocks our cameraman off his seat. But whilst we've been praising the St. George three-quarter line, especially Robinson and the halfback Mark Kokas, we have a lot of praise to uh, give to the forwards. St. George Pack have worked as a good team unit today. Tackle solidly, worked taking the ball up. As Bennett now runs it back towards the St. George line, and there it is, it's all over. The Dragons, successful St. George, have defeated Canterbury Banks down by 29 points to four after St. George had led narrowly at half time by 10 points to four. Every week they're at it, never daring to let up. Because winning's the only thing that counts when you're playing for the Winfield Cup. It doesn't matter if you're famous or a youngster making his way. There's only one.
one thing that matters And that's how well you play That's what the big game's all about Giving it the best you can Always being a leader Never bowing to any man Giving it all you know Giving it your best shot Making every step a winner Proving what it takes you got The State Bank big game last Sunday at Brookvale was between the competition front runners Balmain and Manly Warringah. Manly were trying to make it five wins on the trot, whilst the Tigers were trying to gain a five point break on all the other teams on the Winfield Cup table. All the action last Sunday from Brookvale Oval between Manly and the Tigers. The State Bank Big Game presents the Winfield Cup. Welcome to Brookvale Oval for this Winfield Cup clash of the two front runners in the Premiership table, Manly Warringah and Balmain. The Tigers command the top spot with 20 points and the Sea Eagles follow on 17 points after 12 rounds of the 87 competition. Bill, it looks as though Balmain are comfortable competition leaders, but to me that doesn't come through in their play, struggling a bit in the last fortnight. Well, when you say we've struggled, Graham, I suppose we have on the scoreboard, but that's, that's purely be because we haven't had the players available or the players have been tired from representative commitments. I think we've showed a lot of courage in the last couple of weeks, really, to get the money. Is this crunch time? Is this probably the toughest clash of the round for Balmain? It's an important game for us. It's a four-point game, really. If, if Manly beat us, they're only one behind us. But if we can beat them, we're five points clear, and that'll be a nice position to be in at the end of the first round. Any different than any other major game? The forwards are going to decide this one? No, nah, no different. That's exactly where it'll be won or lost. Bob, I guess just like all major games, uh, the clash and forward, the forwards are all important today, but even more so with the, the two pommies up against each other, uh, Crooks and Ward. Yeah, it could be a you know, pretty good battle in that area, Graham. It's, uh, they're both uh, players with uh, contrasting styles. Ward, uh, more the up and down and knock them out type of uh, front row. And uh, the other bloke, you know, just uh, probably a little bit more skill. But I don't think he's got much more skill than Ward. I think we'll see, uh, we'll see a lot more of Ward's ball, ball skills in Australia than what we actually saw last year in, uh, in England. What about the psychological approach to the game? Manly winning four in a row, Balmain struggling somewhat in the last fortnight. Is, is that an advantage or disadvantage? Some people may be thinking that the Tigers are due to lift themselves. Well, as you know, I mean, you've been involved in the game for a long time, and I mean, last week's forms like yesterday's weather, it means nothing at all. On the three occasions Balmain and Manly met last season, Manly won the first encounter, but Balmain the next two. The Manly team to take the field today is Williams, Ronson, Shearer, O'Connor, Davis, Lyons, Hasler, Vaughton captain, Cleal, Gibbs, Ward, Cochrane and Daly. Balmain's team lineup is Jack, Davidson, Hanrahan, Carter, Gartner, Camru, Gale, Pierce captain, Brooks, Surinan, Crooks, Elias and Clark. The two opposing number 11s today were teammates not long ago playing in the Great Britain test side against the Kangaroos. Lee Crooks from the English club Hull and from Castleford, Kevin Ward. Lee, I guess it's rather ironic that you're up against a, a former teammate, uh, Kevin Ward. You won't be uh, asking for any big pardons? Um, no, obviously it's a very big match for both sides and uh, obviously it's nice that um, I'm playing for Balmain and Kevin's playing for Manly. It probably adds a bit of extra spice to the game. but. Um, Obviously, no quarters are going to be asked for out there, and uh, obviously, you know, Kevin's going to be trying his hardest to, to get the better of me and vice versa, but uh, it's a 13 a man sad uh, team game, and, and it's just not going to be up to me and Kevin, it's going to be up to everybody else as well. What about the climate? Uh, is Kevin Ward going to struggle a bit later on in this game? Yeah, I hope not. I've, I've, I've seen him over the two weeks with the club, I can do the fitness wasn't all that bad when I came over. Obviously, I haven't played for about three or four weeks, but... Uh, can't feel good in this this week and uh, I don't feel silver. On the completion of this round of football, the first half of the season will be over. Our referee here at Brookvale today for our State Bank big game is Kevin Roberts. Manly going to kick off through Cochrane. And they've tried a short kick and it's not going the required distance and that's a penalty right from the outset to the Balmain side. That's not a good start for Manly Warringah. 
and a start that might have caused Manly bigger problems had one Ross Conlon been on the field. I'm quite sure that right from the start, Conlon would have had a shot at goal. In this instance, Wayne Pearce and Scott Gale to look for the touchline. And David, you've got news of a change in the Manly winning side. Well, from what I understand, Rex, that uh, there's going to be a swap in positional play. Darrell Williams, the Kiwi, named originally in the side as a fullback, apparently will swap with Dale Shearer. Now, it's a role that they uh, were selected in those positions in the opening match against St George at Belmore Sports Ground. Uh, both positions not foreign to them, so it'll be interesting to see if, in fact, uh, Bob Fulton does come up with that move. OK, now Balmain have just lost possession through Brooks uh, in the ruck area there. Now they're in possession. They're getting belted backwards at the moment. Paul Gorton's under pressure, trying to hold the ball there. And now we're going to have a couple of players called out and spoken to. It'll be uh, Surinam and Daly. A little bit of... How's your father going on there? Shira will try to get this uh, out of the quarter. Manly are running into a light breeze at the moment. The breeze apparently has uh, sprung up in the last couple of hours. Very light uh, northwest breeze blowing at the moment. Daly comes hard and straight and gets uh, belted backwards a couple of metres. Cochran at dummy half. Ward takes his first touch in Sydney football. He's down quickly. In first grade, that is. He played reserve grade last week. Gibbs wrestling the tackle 10 meters beyond the quarter line midfield Cochran Hasler Shearer cut out pass out to O'Connor O'Connor comes back inside beautifully off his left foot makes uh, ground gets to within five meters of the halfway line lines at dummy half Cochran out to Borton Borton's under pressure there in the middle of the field And the referee is busily sorting them out here at the moment. It's quite a lot of feeling in this game. Plenty of feeling and plenty of determination from Balmain, the way they're hitting in the forwards. They've been out of form the last couple of weeks, and their defence has been enormous the way they're swarming in. Benny Elias, Lee Crooks was the first in, David Brooks crashing in, determined to try and win this game early on, right up the middle. Hasler to Lyons. Lyons standing there. Can't get a go on. The defence is up too quickly. Family forwards taking their time to come round. On to Ward. Ward goes tearing ahead about four metres. To his feet. Cochran. Hasler. Lyons right through. Looks back on the inside. Gets a pass into Hasler. Hasler's going there. And touch played it within two metres of the quarter line. Davies at dummy half. No crusher. Cleal wants it. He gets a few metres, Elias tackles him out to Borton. Borton gets a pass out there to Michael O'Connor. O'Connor's away to Williams. Williams up the sideline. And Williams will score, will he? It is a try. Beautiful try by Mally Moringa. Williams on the tail end of that passing. Was flying when he took the ball. Went round the corner of the defence and scored very, very wide out. Have to look at the touch judge to see. The State Bank replay will show that once again the numbers are on out wide for Manly. It's been coming this try for the last five or ten minutes. O'Connor brilliantly dragged the ball in. Darrell Williams was given a clear run to the line. Surin and tried to get across in cover defence. So too Gary Jack. But they had the numbers. And a big question mark for Bill Anderson. The centre combination of Hanrahan and Matt Carter. Not, just not getting together. Carter caught out by the long ball. Williams with that clear run to the line. And the Tigers with plenty of problems out wide. Well, he was a man that changed places with Shearer, found himself in the centres and comes up with the first try of his all-important clash with the Balmain side. Well, Williams being treated presently, uh, getting some bandaging taken from his knee. There in front of us and the kick at goal will be right on the junction of the quarter and the sideline. Not uh, what you'd call... The easiest kick in the world, kicking into a light breeze. Ronson will have to uh, concentrate very hard on this one. Ronson now, from the sideline. Cochran. 
Yes, he's kicked it. Cochrane from the sideline has raised the flags for Manly Warringah. So the score now is Manly 6, Balmain 0. Balmain get it underway again with uh, Lee Crooks taking the kick. It's a high kick taken by Shearer on the full. It's just outside the quarter. Manly players just taking it in turns at the moment to take the play away from the danger area. Michael O'Connor. Out to Williams. Williams steps back on the inside wisely. Lions. Away to Michael O'Connor up the blind side. He goes forward very well, kicks it ahead. And so go again. Lions gives it away to O'Connor. O'Connor's on the step. He's gone across field. And a long cutout pass is going to be taken by Williams. And it's going to by Ronson rather. And it's going to be put in a touch. Only about two metres short of the corner post. They're playing brilliant football at the moment. Outstanding rugby league and Michael O'Connor involved yet again. One of the longest balls you're ever going to see thrown on the football field in 1987. David Ronson getting onto the end of it. This time Gary Jack and Matt Carter getting there just in time. Scrum going down now. Ten metres outside the uh, Belmain goal line. Cameroo comes away on the blind side. Davidson taking a, a bit of a sprint there on the wing. And the Clark. Clark built it backwards, loses the ball. Camrose picks it up and is taken out of it. With a strong tackle from uh, Ward. Pierce. Manly tackling very, very solidly at the moment. Crooks. Oh, and then Benny Elias has had to. It's a try! Williams has come through and taken the ball from the Benny Elias knock-on. Benny had given up on it, and uh, Williams has come through, scooped the ball up and darted over for a try. Astonishing football. On the State Bank replay, two internationals. Lee Crooks with a lazy pass out of the dummy half position, and Benny Elias should have known better. You don't have to tell Benny that he went to sleep on this occasion. The ball pops up, and away Manly Moringa go again. And Darrell Williams over for his second try. A very sloppy pass from the dummy half position by Lee Crooks. Benny should have just made con taken control of the ball, dropped down on it. Manly dominating the game. Well, maybe 12 or 10 points to nil might uh, be the scoreline of the present time. Balmain well and truly on their heels. Well, if uh, Williams keeps this rate of scoring up, he scored two tries in the last four minutes. Uh, it'll be a, a complete wipeout. He's going astonishingly. I don't remember him scoring a try this year, but he's certainly making up for it today. Cochran. Can he make it two from two? Oh, no. <laughs> that was an awful kick. So the score remains Manly 10, Balmain 0. Taken by Ronson. Ronson dealt with very severely there in the tackle. Made very little ground at all. Gibbs is running from dummy half. Still going and gets to the quarter line. That's a good, tough, a bit of tough guy football, that. On to Daly. Daly's had the ball stolen from him, stripped. It was Pierce that took it. Crooks runs from dummy half. And Manly under pressure for one of the rare occasions in their quarter. Out to Brooks. Brooks just hurls himself at the defence. This is an area where Balmain looking to come back very quickly into the game will look to the likes of Scott Gale and probably their best runner from broken play, Gary Jack. Gibbs just getting there in time to pick Camrose there up on the inside. Elias running from dummy half, gets it away to Suridan. That pass looked a little bit suspect. Elias, Gale, Clark, back to Gale, a cutout pass. Out to Gartner. Gartner goes round his man and he's done it. He's got round and scored in the corner. Davis there was pushed off and Gartner has got around him. On the State Bank replay, Balmain knew that this game was gone if they weren't the next scorers. 
And quite ironically, they are the ones that come up with the extra man in the overlap situation. Scott Gale doubling around, a good long ball out to Hanrahan. He gives his winger, Gardner, just a half a yard start on Davis, and he pushes him off. Too much experience for the man that's played more than half of his career at Brookvale Oval, and wouldn't Russell Gardner have enjoyed that? Scotty Gale went into the half-back position as Peter Cambro was receiving some attention in back play, and Gartner, too much experience and still plenty of pace to score out wide. In fact, he comes round to improve the position for Lee Crooks. Lee Crooks taking over the responsibilities of goal kicking. Well, this one's about eight metres in from the sideline, right on the quarter. This will be well within his capabilities. Ten points to four at the moment, Manly lead. Crooks moves in. And straight as a gun barrel gets the uh, conversion. So the score hastens on. Manly ten, Balmain six. We've had 22 minutes of play of non-stop frenetic action with uh, Manly now to restart with Cochrane. Oh, poised Davidson there. He was uh, sort of bending backwards over the uh, sideline. Didn't get his feet over. Elias. Driven him back very strongly. Hanrahan came on to Crooks. Crooks has tempered his ball distribution in the early part of this game. The kick put downfield by Camru, taken well by Ronson. Don't tell me this is going to be a repeat. The ball's gone in the ricochet of Pierce, and Pierce taken out of it by Hasler. Well, the replay will certainly tell a story here. Pierce breaking away with his ball, taken high. A difficult decision for Kevin Roberts coming up, the man that sent Eastern Suburbs Wayne Chalice off at Henson Park. On this occasion, no such action. We see another shot of it. Hasler coming across, flying across in cover defence. Definitely a high tackle, but a different story this weekend. Kevin Roberts, no man off here at Brookvale Oval. Lee Crooks now. Strikes it well, so the score now is Manly winning at 10, Balmain 8. Is uh, Bill Anderson concerned? It's a penalty against Daly for lifting the feet before the ball went in. Gale will take the kick. Gale's torpedo punt finds a good touch. That's uh, 10 yards from the quarter line. Great opportunity now for Gary Jack to hunt in this front line for Balmain. One or two plays maybe towards the post. Set themselves up with a short line. Or also a situation to bring Lee Crooks into play with his ball skills. Man in action now, but lacking any runners. He was searching for somebody there. Had the ball on the crook of his arm. Out to Lane. Out to Gale. Gale steps. Comes back on the inside. He's tackled by Hasler. He's Lane. Out to Jack. Jack's evaded one tackle, two, three, and very heavily tackled ultimately there, midfield by Ward. Brooks. Can't get through there. Last tackle coming up. Gale will drop. Oh, an intercept taken by Lyons. He's going to step it out now. He's going past Gary Jack. Fights him off, gets a pass away to Lane. Lane's going strongly. To Ronson, rather. Ronson's going strongly. He's going to finish it as he yes, he is. It'll be a try. No double movement there. He bounced over the line. Dead set, fair try. All 
from an intercept by line. See it again on the State Bank replay. And Scott Gale was the man that unloaded the four pass. It was picked up by Lyons. David Ronson, this terrific chase was on to try and pull Ronson down. Gartner was making yards on him in the final stages. No decision there for Kevin Roberts. The man was bouncing across with his own momentum. But Scott Gale, the short ball was on to Paul Clark. He went out wide for Surinan. Straight to Cliff Lyons, who's having an outstanding first half from Manley. Back inside to Ronson, and the chase was on. John Davidson couldn't match it with pace. Neither could Wayne Pierce. Russell Gardner coming across from the right wing. But the momentum of the tackle taking him across for another Manly Moringa try. David Ronson, the scorer. Cochrane is sh was shading his eyes from the sun, and directly behind him there is uh, Kevin Roberts, who's doing exactly that. There he is again. Strikes it well. So that's the score. Manly 16, Balmain 8. And again, it's run by Manley. Lyons, beautiful footwork by Michael O'Connor. He steps, goes back on the inside. He gets the pass away to Borton. Borton goes round the side, the blind side. And uh, takes Prater within about 18 metres of the Balmain line. Stuart Davis, running from dummy half. Now Borton is there. The back line is very deep, but here goes Ward straight ahead. About three or maybe seven metres short of the line. Hasler, Lyons, turns it back on the inside to Cochrane, standing deep and coming on the burst. Stuart Davis, up to Hasler, on the Lyons. Lyons through the tackle, but can't get uh, going again. Hasler runs from dummy half, gets a pass away to Michael O'Connor, gives it to Williams, and Williams at the end! It's a fair try! He beat the defence, no question. Say it again. On the State Bank replay, Des Hasler shoots out of dummy half. Matt Carter was forced to come in and, and cut him out of, try and cut him out of the play. And Williams, touch judge, right on the spot, ruling a try. Too much pace, Hasler out of the dummy half position. Quick play of the ball, and Balmain were caught short out wide. Once again, plenty of trouble with the defensive line. A real headache for Bill Anderson just before this half-time break. Well, the score's moved on to 20 points to eight. Daryl Williams was the try scorer. That's his third try. Now, here he comes. It's away to the left, it wasn't a bad kick. And the score remains Manly 20, Balmain 8. Cochran on a crush of Cleal. He pushed one or two out of the way, didn't get himself by any means in the clear. Hasler at dummy half. Little kick over the top. The ball's gone on the ricochet to, it looks like Camru, it is. Elias, Clark, Gary Jack. Out to Carter. Uh, very pedestrian for pace at the moment, uh, Balmain, but uh, I think things can change. We've got about half a minute now to half time. Clark running on the open side of the ruck. Elias, Gale, Brooks. And here's the last tackle coming up. Crooks, long cutout pass to Surinan, drops the ball, Gibbs comes up with it. And there's the herder in the background, so at the half-time break, it's Manley in a canter at this stage. Manley's tries have come from Williams 3 and Ronson 1. Cochran, 2 goals from 4 attempts, 20 points. Balmain tries Gartner and goals 2 from 2 to Crooks. The Manley score 20, the Balmain score 8. Doing it very, very easily at the moment, but things can change. And indeed, it's a grand picture here at Brookvale Oval with the clear blue skies, the almost windless conditions, just a light breeze from the uh, north quarter. 
and uh, the people on the far side of the ground bathed in sunshine really is a, an absolutely delightful day. Balmain have got it all to do. They trail by 20 points to eight. They've got 40 minutes to rectify that situation. They have a change on their side. David. Yes, uh, Jamie Davidson wearing number 15 will replace his brother John. Rex. OK. Lee Crooks gets it off. And it's going to be different this time. It goes to Shearer. Shearer's halfway through the gap, fully through the gap, and caught from behind there by Clark. Wharton down uh, the next man to take the ball. Uh, I was just watching Shearer there. He's limping back into position. Cochran on a daily. Runs straight at the opposition. He's left one behind on the ground there with him. It's the ball back to Williams. It goes back to Jack. Jack's trying to circle the defence and go around the outside, but he can't do that. Tackle by Davis. Hanrahan. There's not much urgency in the Balmain move. They've taken three play the balls to get all back on side. I'll be looking for a change of tactics in this second half, though. I'll be looking for Balmain to try and set up short blind sides, try and break up the defensive line of Manly, use uh, some runners like Surinan and Gary Jack down the blind side. Morton comes off with a beautiful tackle on Pierce, and he would have enjoyed that. There's been a little bit of... a little bit of animosity. There's Morton again bringing off a great tackle on Surinan. The kick downfield will be taken on the bounce by uh, Shearer. He's, even though he's a stringy fellow, he's, uh, he's got enormous strength. Seems to be able to fight the tackle. Michael O'Connor, little chip over the top. Benny Elias is there. Michael O'Connor tackles him. They're about 10 metres beyond the quarter line. Manley's in. Gale. Camru. Pierce. Carter. Tackle by Williams and Vaughton combine. Jamie Davidson. Williams getting it very involved defensively. Elias, Clark, Pierce. Good tackling combination there. Cochran underneath and Daly up the top. Gale. Oh, Crooks has been tackled hard and uh, loses the ball forward. Ronson. By to Shearer. Forward slow to respond there from both sides. Way to Gibbs, looking for work. Gibbs has busted them. Gets a one-handed pass away to Michael O'Connor. Michael O'Connor's going upfield, gets the pass to Davies, and Davis is going to spin on and score the try. And it's a good one. A very, very spectacular try involving Michael O'Connor and Stuart Davies. See it again on the State Bank replay. Matt Carter had been shouting to his Balmain Tiger teammates to get out here on this right-hand side and to fill in. Gibbs found the gap and a terrific ball put in and around behind the bodies of, uh, or the body of Russell Gardner. On this occasion, O'Connor wasn't lacking support. Stuart Davis is the man inside. And he's a good finisher and very underrated, Stuart Davis, making up for an earlier error when he missed his opposite, Russell Gardner, in the first half. But Ronnie Gibbs having a strong game for Manly, busting the defensive line. A terrific ball there around the back of the defence. And two and three Manly players on the spot to make sure that this scoreline now races away in favour of the Manly Sea Eagles. Yeah, splendid work there by Gibbs to bust the tackle of uh, Brooks. Brooks is a, a noted defender. Now Cochran. Fails. So the score remains. Manly 24, Balmain 8. Five tries to one at this stage. Brooks gets a long kick away. It goes to Ronson. Ronson brings it back upfield, up over the quarter line. He's come on with leaps and bounds, this young fellow, in the last uh, five or six weeks. Being selected regularly in reserve grade and uh, becoming a, uh, a real first-grade winger. Well, that'll be play on because it was Benny Elias who was uh, the man at fault. Well, it was a long cut-out pass. 
to Lyons. Lyons drops the ball, and that will be a scrum on the quarter line with Balmain to put it in. Just listening to some scores from other grounds that uh, are very close. Well, there's Camero who has uh, lost the ball between his legs and now he's had to dive back for it. Borton came around quickly and was onto him. Well, they're making it very hard for themselves with passes like that. Hanrahan's pass was uh, a dog's body of a pass. Away to Clark. Straight, strong run. Benny Elias. Away to Brooks. Brooks to Surinan. Shows it outside. Inside. Drops the ball. Fallen on by another Valmain player. The Elias. Scott Gale. Hanrahan taken down very, very quickly. That was a great tackle by Lyons. Scott Gale runs. Now he tries the over the head and it's out in the full. Well, as disorganised a set of six tackles as you're ever going to see in 1987. The forwards just not doing the job getting on top for Balmain and left to the individuals like Scott Gale to try and pull off tricks like that. Scrum going down just inside the quarter. Hasler gets it, but the referee not happy with that. That's better. Out to Shearer. Michael O'Connor, beautiful pass to Williams. They've got the space on the outside here. Gets it out to Ronson, or rather inside to Ronson. He came back infield away from the sideline. Williams a dummy half now. He'll give it to Michael O'Connor. Out to Lyons. Lyons gets a cutout pass out to Cochran. Cochran to Cleal. Cleal's over halfway. He's running beautifully, running strongly. Gets to the quarter line, stands in a tackle, gets it to Gibbs. Gibbs goes up the sideline, and Gibbs is going to score. It's a great try to Ronnie Gibbs. to eight. It looks like the weekend for all the big names to go down the tube. Canterbury went down yesterday to St George and now today Manly putting the cleaners through Balmain. And on the State Bank replay, the second rowers getting their act together for the Sea Eagles. Plenty of missed tackles here. Count them if you want to. Noel Clear was allowed to stand and a man that is a bit of a favourite here as the cheers go up again for Ronnie Gibbs. He stretches out, the defence hangs off. A great reward for a man that certainly is putting in an outstanding performance today for his side, as he has done right throughout the season in the Winfield Cup so far. Another man who's dominated a beautiful long ball by Cliff Lyons to again pick out the defensive line of Balmain out wide yet again, I say, and Billy Anderson, no doubt, puts that into the notebook for training this week. Noel Cleal taken by Jack but not put down. And Ronnie Gibbs, as busy as any back rower in the game of rugby league, finding that there was a nice gap for him to slide through and the green starts to appear and over he goes for a great Manly Ringer try. Yes, well, uh, Ronnie Gibbs, age 25, has uh, really put the cleaners through him on that occasion. That was beautiful stuff, beautiful backing up. It's almost as if Crusher Cleal, who was the last man to handle the ball, was saying, come on, Ron, come on. He was jogging the ball about in his hands as he stood on the tackle. Cochrane. Yes, he's raised the flags. And the score now reads Manly 30, Balmain 8. Out of Daly. Daly goes very strongly towards the opposition. Cochrane, Ward. And he's tackled by Crooks. Crooks has really played very little part in this game, apart from kicking off. Lions, very close to being through there. Cochran runs from dummy half. It's a one-handed pass away to Hasler. Hasler to Shearer. Beautiful hands out to Ronson. Ronson gets it back on the inside. It's going to be picked up. Well, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. We'll see it again on the replay and see whether he was right. The Manly players arguing the point that Lee Crooks following in... The Balmain cover defence handles the ball here, knocking it towards the line. It was Lee Crooks, in fact. Mal Cochran on the spot to dive over. The scrum win to Balmain, out to Gary Jack, standing as a 5'8". He 
got a, a bit of a necker there from uh, Shearer. Campbell comes away with a strong burst. Six tries to one, three goals out of uh, six attempts for Cochrane. There's Ward in the middle of the ruck. Scott Gale. Getting a pass away beautifully to Hanrahan. There's a kick ahead. It didn't really have a great deal going for it. Hanrahan's got it now. He's fallen on it. Cochrane's fallen on him. Jamie Davidson, Elias. Out to Campbell. There's a beautiful pass out to Camru. Camru's showing a lot of pace. And he's picked off with a perfect tackle. Beautiful so a covering tackle there coming from Dale Shearer. Gartner's uh, tried to go over on the blind side. And it's a handover. Very anticlimactic. Williams comes away with a bit of a burst. Still got 5, 10, 13 minutes to go. Lines another couple of metres. Oh, Daly's dropped the ball again. This has uh, been a bad day for him today. Out to Sinclair. Sinclair goes straight. Camaro, Hanrahan, out to Pierce. Pierce tackled. Can't get a pass away. Belts it. Yes, he does. They're really playing touch football at the moment. Hanrahan, Elias, a long cutout pass to Gale. Crops, stops, goes forward now. He's definitely put out there by that uh, crusher clear on that occasion. Elias going for a dummy half. And he's there. Well, that's uh, something that's come late and uh, was very useful for them, but uh, it's not going to all of the result of this game. On the State Bank replay, it certainly came late, but the one thing that Balmain haven't done all day is go forward. That's the simple answer to the equation, says Benny Elias. I'm just going to go straight ahead. There was plenty of catching and passing in the last movement for Balmain, but very few players deciding just to go straight towards the try line of Manly on this occasion. Manly may be getting a little bit complacent, but Benny Elias picking up the try. Benny Elias, age 23. Lee Crooks to attempt the kick. He's successful, so the score remains Manly 30, Balmain 14. Mr Roberts sounds the blower. And away we go again for the last ten and a half minutes. Taken well by Jack. He's got out bit just to the quarter. It's a pass away to Elias. Michael Campbell there. Elias Clark spins his way through a tackle. Camaroos, a long cutout pass to Gale. Then back on the inside to Pierce. I think this missed tackle situation tells the story this afternoon. Manly, just 11 missed tackles. Balmain, an incredible 29. 23 of those being produced by the Balmain forwards. Out to Clark. Good pass to Brooks. Brooks gets it to Hanrahan. Hanrahan goes up early. He's busted a tackle, looking for support. Uh, gives a pass of... Uh, Absolutely no dimensions at all. The ball's up in the air. Taken by Crusher Cleal. Cleal's being tapped on the bottom at a fairly substantial bottom it is to get on with it. Shearer trying to step his way through the defence of Balmain there. Very nearly did it. Davis. Lyons. He's had a strong game, Lyons. Davis pushing players out of the way. Ward, Hasler, Lyons, Cleal. Beautiful to Michael O'Connor. Lovely pass there. The pass back on the inside is picked up by Lyons. Lyons goes strong. 
gets it to Prussia Cleal, who's tackled about five metres short of the line. They're all over him like the rash. Out to Shearer. Shearer throws the dummy, straightens, gets a pass back on the inside. I think it's Davis, he's two metres short of the line. Hasler. Lions. Gibbs! Gibbs! Gibbs has scored the try! Back on the inside! It's an old goal ploy! You string it wide and you turn the pass back in after a couple of the passes have gone out. And Lions was the man that did it. See it again on the State Bank replay. Brilliantly engineered here. There was no doubt that Cliff Lyons had whispered inside to Ronnie Gibbs. Hang about, I'll draw the defence here. Here's the gap, Ron. Why don't you just stroll across and pick up your second try? A terrific performance by Ronnie Gibbs. I've already spoken about that, but Cliff Lyons has just orchestrated this game this afternoon for Manly. He knew that the gap was going to be produced back inside. David Brooks wasn't able to tidy it up, and Ronnie Gibbs on the spot. Beautiful hands by Lyons, just prepared to take the tackle. As easy as you please, back inside. And Manly streeting the Tigers this afternoon, now 34-14. to 34-14 to 14 is the uh, scoreline. And David Fordham, you've got another change in the Tigers' ranks. Yes, the reserve grade captain, uh, Mark, Mike Marquito, is coming on to replace Lee Crooks, who's been struggling for the last five or ten minutes with, it, with an injured left knee. There's Crooks leaving the ground now. Mike Marquito. Cochrane, who uh, attempt to convert that try. He does. So the score is now Manly 36, Balmain 14. Then Elias brings the ball back to halfway. Shearer feels it. Three metres from his goal line, came out a few metres, but dumped his very slowly to his feet. Ronson running from dummy half, gets to the quarter line. Cochran, Hasler, Lyons, Williams, O'Connor back inside to Williams. Williams is on the boil up the sideline. Long floating pass goes back inside to Hasler. Hasler's going to motor down there. He gets the pass to Mike, Mike O'Connor. And Michael O'Connor's gone around and scored a try. Yes, indeed, they're cutting him to shreds at the moment. This is magical football. Magic. And see it again on the State Bank replay. Superb football by Manley again. It stretches his Balmain side out on the edge of the back line. O'Connor and Darrell Williams completing the damage right throughout the afternoon. And every time the Manly players looked inside for support, two or three in this case, four and five Manly players getting each other's way. O'Connor, a deserved try for Michael O'Connor. Too much pace for Wayne Pearce. And what brilliant rugby league that was. An example of just how to draw the players with long passes. Lyons takes the man out, turns his back, puts Williams in, who engineered the overlap for Michael O'Connor. Plenty of room to move for Darrell Williams. Michael O'Connor was in the back there wrestling with the Balmain player. That shows the enthusiasm he's got to get there in support. And Des Hasler finally drawing Gardner and giving Michael O'Connor that clear run to the line. Wayne Pierce try, as he always does. Too late for the Balmain side. Well, it's eight tries and four goals, 40 points to 14. This has been a staggering performance, really astonishing display of running rugby league. And have this large crowd loved it. The kick at goal from the quarter line, five metres in from the sideline. from the sideline again. An astonishing kick, 42 to 14. See it again on the State Bank replay. It's just a beautiful kick. Just creamed the inside of the uh, right-hand upright. And there's the man. Gives it dummy half. has totally curbed his uh, bad behaviour. 
Shearer have busted them, has he? Very close to. Campbell was there, the tackler of Marquito. On a crush of Cleal, running strongly up the sideline. Got a pass to Ronson. Ronson's in the clear. Gets it into Cochran. And Cochran's away for another. Oh, they're crucifying down there. This is a crucifixion. A slaughter. An absolute bath they're getting. They are try treating them with absolute disdain. And on the State Bank replay, that missed tackle sheet is certainly going to raise itself again as Noel Creel comes the blind. Two and three defenders there. He had no trouble to free his hands. Away goes Ronson again and back inside. One of the best support players in rugby league, Malcolm Cochran. And on a weekend where Canterbury Bankstown have found themselves embarrassingly defeated by St George yesterday, Manly stands up now. And we have to ask ourselves the question in the world of rugby league in New South Wales and Sydney. Is this manly side good enough now to go on to win the 87 Winfield Cup? Balmain have led the competition right throughout this first round. They're still going to stay on top, but manly laying claims today with a, a stunning performance. Cochrane scored 14 points so far. If he kicks this goal, it'll be 16 points for him. I think the Manly fans would like this to go on and on and on into the night, under, under lights. I don't believe they can recollect a time when Manly have fired so well. The kick at goal is successful, so the score hastens on. Manly 48, Balmain 14. tries to two. And Benny Elias struggles to bring the ball back to halfway as a bit of a chance starts up in the grandstand. The crowd seeing that scoreline of 48 to 14, chanting out that they want 50 points. Ronson feels that. <laughs> Brings it back to the quarter. Gibbs runs from dummy half, just settling the play down. On a ward. He's about five metres beyond the halfway, uh, the quarter line. To Cleal! 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 Pass away! Oh, it went there! Haslett <laughs> overrunning! <laughs> The crowd were willing that to be a pass to Hasler that he could take. It just went behind him. And if, in fact, it did go to Des Hasler, he was away and under the under the post, and that was, would have been the 50 score line that the crowd was seeking. There's Gale now trying chip and chase. He hasn't got to. Uh, Lyons has done it. Got to his feet. There's the hooter in the background. And they won by 48 points to 14 in an astonishing display of precision running rugby league. The scorers for the Manly side, and there have been nine of them, were Williams, three tries all in the first half. Gibbs, two. Ronson, Davies, O'Connor and Cochran. Goals, six to Cochran. Try scorers for Balmain, Gartner and Elias, and Crooks, three. 48 points to 14. Every week they're at it. Never daring to let up. Because winning's the only thing that counts when you're playing for the Winfield Cup. It doesn't matter if you're famous or a youngster making his way. There's only one thing that matters, and that's how well you play. That's what the big game's all about. Giving it the best you can. Always being a leader. Never bowing to any man.
in an incredibly high scoring round of Winfield Cup football. Let's check all the highlights out of each and every other game. At Endeavour Field, the boot of Dean Carney had Illawarra leading 6-0 midway through the first half. Then the Sharks started a scoring frenzy when Dane Sorensen posted Cronulla's first points. The Sharks had the Steelers in big trouble by moving the ball quickly. Glenn Coleman did the finishing work on this movement. Cronulla's third try in the space of five minutes was scored by Craig Diamond. At half time, the Sharks led by 10 points. Cronulla had already scored in the second half before the Steelers posted their first try through replacement player Owen Saunders. Cronulla scored six tries in a continuation of their outstanding form this season. At Redfern Oval, South Sydney turned on one of the best tries this season with Craig Coleman involved on three occasions. The ball went through 12 sets of hands as the Rabbitohs went in search of the opening. Finally, it came. The Bears were leading 12-8 after John MacArthur crossed. At the same time, South lost brilliant fullback Phil Blake, who hobbled off. North Sydney led 18-10 early in the second half through a converted try by Mark Cannon. The Rabbitohs struck back quickly as replacement players Paul Roberts and fullback David Crookshank combined. Souths were back in front when Jason Moon forced his way over off a lovely Coleman pass. The Bears had their chances, including a disallowed try near full time. At Seaford Sports Ground, Eastern Suburbs confirmed their final five prospects by defeating Canberra 21-6. In the first half, the Roosters put together some nifty teamwork in chalking up two converted tries. The Raiders did manage their own converted try, courtesy of a Chris O'Sullivan break and lob pass to Phil Carey. But two second half intercepts by Steve Morris sealed the proceedings. At Parramatta Stadium, Penrith got away to a bright start with Warren Fenton shrugging off the defence and offloading to Joe Fatanza who charged away. Peter Sterling was the difference, with two tries coming off his clever kicking. In the second half, the sight that's become sadly all too common for Eric Groth. The second half proved just as tight as the first, with Brett Kenny's runaway effort coming in the dying minutes for a 23-10 victory. Parramatta's third in a row. Plenty of tries were on offer as we just checked those results for you from this weekend. On the Saturday, a major upset there to St George clinging to some sort of chance of making the semi-finals in 87. East, a strong win over Canberra, 21-6. Parramatta, finding some form, 23-10 over Penrith. South Sydney, just over North. Cronulla, a big win over Illawarra at home. And Manly with that stunning victory in the State Bank big game, 48-14. Now the table still sees Balmain on top. Manly, just a point away, as is East and Cronulla from the Sea Eagles. Canterbury, Canberra, Parramatta, Souths, all on 14 in a congested uh, bunch of teams there on the table. And Penrith, Illawarra on 12, St George 11, North 8 and West still struggling on 8. Now a split weekend next weekend in the Winfield Cup. Illawarra take on Souths, Cronulla and Canberra, West versus Penrith and Eastern Suburbs enjoy the bye. Well, I trust you enjoyed all the action once again. Until next week, I'm Graham Hughes. Goodbye for now.